Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn about splenectomy. We will see the indications of splenectomy, we will learn about abscopal effect, we will see the short term and long term consequences of splenectomy, we will see how to manage post splenectomy patient and also some point about vaccines to be given in the splenectomy patient. Now why splenectomy is important? Splenectomy is basically done for control of symptoms in patient with massive splenomegaly. Like for disease control in patient with traumatic splenic rupture or for correction of cytopenias in patient with hypersplenism or immune mediated destruction of one or more blood element. So basically in certain conditions splenectomy is done as a life saving procedure while in some condition it is done to prevent the long term effect of hypersplenism like cytopenias. So now let us learn about diseases causing massive splenomegaly and also it is a very common question asked by consultant during bedside round or during viva or in the class. So massive splenomegaly can be seen in chronic myeloid leukemias, lymphomas, hairy cell leukemias, polycythemias, Gaucher's disease, chronic lymphocytic leukemias, sarcoidosis, autoimmune hemolytic anemias, diffuse splenic hemangiomatosis and myelofibrosis with myeloid metaplasia. So try to remember all of this. Now what is the role of splenectomy for staging of a disease? This is done in case of Hodgkin disease in those patients who are at clinical stage 1 or 2. What happens is in this stage one third of the patient have normal size spleen but they have Hodgkin disease while one third of the patient have enlarged spleen but are free from the tumor. So due to this varied presentation Non-invasive staging of spleen is not a reliable option to take treatment decisions because in clinical stage 1 and 2 radiation therapy alone is contemplated as treatment. But nowadays widespread use of systemic therapy in all stages of Hodgkin disease has made staging laparotomy with splenectomy unnecessary. Now in the causes of massive splenomegaly I told you about chronic myeloid leukemia. Splenectomy basically does not affect the natural history of the disease but removal of the massive spleen makes patient more comfortable and reduces the transfusion re requirement. But now as we all know there is improvement in the treatment of CML and which has reduced the need of splenectomy in such patients. In conditions like hairy cell leukemia, prolymphocytic leukemias, splenic mantle or marginal zone lymphomas, splenectomy is an effective second or tertiary treatment. As it is seen that splenectomy in such patient is associated with significant tumor regression in bone marrow and other sites of the disease. This means that splenectomy done in this patient has led to reduction or regression of the tumor from a distant site. And it is also observed that in some type of lymphoid tumors, example chronic lymphocytic leukemia and pro-lymphocytic leukemias, splenic irradiation is associated with regression in systemic disease. And this is known as abscopal effect. Now it is assumed that the spleen secretes some of the hormones and growth factors which increase the tumor cell proliferation and by removing the spleen there is decrease in such hormones and growth factors and there is regression of the tumor. Although the theory given behind this abscophal effect is not substantial. Now it is important to know that traumatic or iatrogenic splenic rupture is an important and common therapeutic indication for splenectomy. In some patient splenic rupture may lead to peritoneal seeding and this is known as splenosis. Basically the spleen tissue in the peritoneal cavity do not have supply from portal circulation and this spleen tissue may cause pain and GI obstruction. In most of the cases splenomegaly is associated with cytopenias and doing splenectomy can correct these cytopenias particularly anemia and thrombocytopenia. The only contraindication to splenectomy is bone marrow failure because in bone marrow failure the enlarged spleen is the only source of hemopoietic tissue. Now how the splenectomy is done? Basically laparoscopy is preferred over open surgery because laparoscopy has shorter stay in the hospital and faster recovery. But at the same time it is important to know that laparoscopy is associated with postoperative portal venous thrombosis and blood carry syndrome. Now let us see what will be the long term effect of splenectomy on hematological profile. The answer is it has minimum effect. Basically in the immediate post splenectomy period leukocytosis and thrombocytosis can occur. Leukocytosis up to 25,000 and thrombocytosis up to 10 lakhs can be seen. 
but this recovers within two to three weeks and gets back to normal. The chronic manifestation of splenectomy are marked variation in the shape and size of the erythrocyte that is associated with anisocytosis and poikilocytosis. Others are hovel jolly bodies, hens bodies, basophilic stippling and occasionally nucleated erythrocytes can also be seen. It is important to note that if these findings are seen in a person who has not gone splenectomy then we should suspect splenic infiltration by tumor. Now coming to the important point what is the most serious consequence of splenectomy? It is basically increased susceptibility to bacterial infections particularly by encapsulated organisms like streptococcus pneumoniae, haemophilus influenza and some of the gram negative organisms. Now some point on pneumococcal sepsis. Basically the children less than 20 years of age are more susceptible for pneumococcal sepsis. But overall in any age group there is 7% chance of developing pneumococcal sepsis in 10 years. The case fatality rate is 50 to 80%. Now few points in general. About 25% of the patients without spleen may develop serious infection in lifetime. That means out of 100 patients who undergo splenectomy or are patient of sickle cell anemia and underwent autosplenectomy, among this 100 patient, 25% in their lifetime will develop some serious infection. And the frequency is very high in the first 3 years of the splenectomy. 15% of the infection are polymicrobial and lung, skin and blood are the most common site. But at the same time it is important to note that there is no increase in risk of viral infection. Now why the splenectomy patient have increased susceptibility to bacterial infection? Because of their inability to remove the opsonized bacteria from the bloodstream. Also there is defect in making antibodies to T cell independent antigens such as polysaccharides component of the bacterial capsule. Now let us see what all vaccinations should be done in the patient of splenectomy. Basically pneumococcal vaccine should be administered to all the patient of splenectomy two weeks prior to elective splenectomy. And some of the advisory committee recommend that a dose of vaccine should be repeated after five years. And also this patient should receive vaccination for Neisseria meningitis. Now whenever a patient of post splenectomy comes to you, the patient should be educated to consider the unexplained fever as a medical emergency because in such patient treatment of bacteremia might be life saving although routine chemoprophylaxis with penicillin is not recommended also along with the bacteria the patient of splenectomy are at increased risk of parasitic infection especially babesiosis so that is it for the video guys i hope you like the video and uh, please do subscribe to my channel to stay tuned with such videos